Before I, before I really get into this, um, just a very quick um, sort of a story as to how, how we got to implement this with uh, within our organization. Um, when I arrived with, within the organization, um, they, there was no PMO per se um, or a project delivery uh, team. I needed to set this up, but yet um, they were running quite a lot of projects. Um, it was siloed, um, very, very siloed where they had every other part of the business with their own business units um, had their own sort of set of methods and processes that they, how they would run projects. But yet it was all sort of based on a similar kind of approach. And when I arrived, um, you know, I was asked to to put all of this together um, and sort of get a solution in place that will actually focus um, the whole of the portfolio for for the organization. And um, you know, as as I went through the business, I started asking questions to the business units um, and finding out that eventually that um, they were running 112 um, projects, but everything was ran in silent. Each one of the business units ran the project individually, so there was no you know, collaboration between any of the departments, interdepartmental um, changes that needs to be made or projects that are linking to each other, et cetera, et cetera. So the visibility was a major problem. They never really had an idea of what the current status of their portfolio was, their projects were, where they were, what the budgets were, what's being spent. Um, and Marky 360's um, product, a suite of products that they've got available has really transformed um, the business in order to actually deliver project um, into the digital transformation space. So um, with, with that said, with every piece of the, the suite that was being made available to us, um, it, it's, it's really of, of, of a nature of you, you don't have to take all of it at once, you can actually build up as you go on, which was really great with, with the way this works. And the reason I, I went this route was that there was no need to purchase a third party portfolio or a project management piece of software in order to deliver your portfolios for you. Um, this is using the Microsoft stack, um, which your organization, if, if they are running Microsoft 365 um, currently, then you would be paying for it anyway. So um, it, and all the capabilities are already there. So there's no need for additional um, pieces of software. Um, everything that, that's being done is, is also done in a way that it's um, um, of such nature that there's, there's no need to, to customize. None of the work that has been done over here is customized a piece of work, um, which means that if solution goes in, um, as Aaron has said, we can ultimately walk away and, and you can actually pick it up from there and build on, on that, that solution that you've actually implemented because it's part of the Microsoft stack and, and you can just continue doing that. So what I'll do is um, I'll go through the process of um, ideation slash um, sort of new project requests in order to streamline requests that normally comes into the organization. Um, this particular app is built on a Power App uh, based in the Power Platform space. Um, and I'm going to go through the process. It, the screen that you see in front of you is ultimately um, highly configurable. Um, it depends on how you as an organization require um, new requests or ideas to be submitted um, and in what format and what details are required. So we'll go through um, the whole process. This is the dashboard. They'll, once you've submitted a request, that's what the dashboard will look like. And again, this is configurable. We can change the look, um, how you want to see it. So um, I'll get stuck in. So the request name. Just a sponsor um, how this works with this is also linked to your active directory, so um, it will pick up. Um, obviously, if you're if you've collect, connected your your environment to your active directory as well, so that will all pick it up. This is a, a, a really interesting um, section, which is the request type. Now the request type is um, if, for an example, I select um, an IT project, the IT project um, has got a whole bunch of flows and processes that sits behind it. And this is where the moment you select this request type as an IT project, all the flows um, and the processes that you've built in the back end of this starts kicking in. And what I mean by that is, is that um, an IT project, for an example, you will have a certain template for a project schedule. 
and that project schedule is the format that you want um, the people to use. You can even call it IT project software um, development. So there will be a template for software development. So um, it will create the necessary um, artifacts that sits behind this. Also, as I go through the demonstration, um, you'll see that I'll make reference to project documentation. Um, what it can also do is, is that you can create um, file structures, which is sits on um, SharePoint. Um, it will also, that file structure can be pre-populated with templates. So you can have a uh, business requirements document sitting in the requirements um, phase that you were sitting in. So if you've got phases in your, in your file structures, that can be structured in that way. So um, we can actually put all of that in place um, as a pre-configured solution before you even start working with it just by virtue of going through the requirements process. Just want to copy some, some data here, some text. And again, everything you see on this page is configurable. You can configure it the way you like um, and you want it for your business. Um, you know, if it, if it aligns with your business processes or your, your strategic goals, then that's what you will do. Same with finances. You can put a lot more detail in if you want. Um, and I forgot to mention that this is also um, a point where you um, can have limited to certain security groups. For an example, if you want team members or people um, sort of on your on, on your production floor to log a request, then they can put minimal detail in. But again, you can change it as your to your to your liking. So the scoring one is is a really really good. Um, place to be at. Um, the reason this is this is great is that if your business um, has got business goals or strategic deliverables that you need to be met from a business perspective, then this section, whoever is the requester for this idea or this project, makes them think a little bit, does this request actually um, fit in with the business and the company goals um, strategically or whatever the, the, the way forward for the business is? So when they do select it, um, again, this is something that we can sit and work with you as, as an organization. And you can decide whatever those questions are, but it's scored and it's weighted and it will prioritize the particular request. And it just gives you um, so much easier point of view to actually look at how, how does this really fit into the business. Also, um, this data can be pulled through into Power BI where you can actually have um, views and reports on, on where, where it actually stacks up. In, in your in your portfolio that you currently have. So I'll just select a, select a few items over here. Um, and again, this is this is also fully configurable um, on the end of the day, so you don't have to um, think this is the only way we can do this. Um, attachments, you can also, if there is a request that's coming in, they do have attachments for whatever they have, you know, if it's demonstrations or there's documentation or PDFs or whatever the cases can also be attached to this. When you submit this, um, there's a whole flow structure and a process flow that kicks in on the back of this. It will now send out um, an email um, to whoever you decide to be in that process flow. So if if you've got five people that needs to be in the loop about requests that's coming to go from the one stage to the next, um, again, that's configurable within the flow and it will do the necessary um, email distribution um, on that basis. So if there's five people in the, in the line, it'll go to the first one, then the second one, and the third one, and so on. Um, so what it will, will generally do is it will then send an email um, to, to whoever's requested it. Now, I've pre-staged one because it generally takes between two and five minutes for the request work to actually, the process flows to happen in the back end. And I think if you can look in the back, um, there we go. So this request has now already come through. The email will pop in. There's the email that we've now submitted for this but I'll go through the pre-stage one that I have. And what we generally do is that in the emails or the notifications that do go out, um, we try and put as much detail as possible. So I, I informed decision can be made or alternatively, if you look at the bottom buttons in the bottom, um, you can add additional buttons in there, request more information um, or forward through to someone else or whatever the case is. It's really up to you how you want to configure this. And the process as it works, it's very simple. It's you approve it and you can make comments in here. Um, and if you reject it, the same principle applies. Um, you submit this, this particular request. This request will now, what it will do is that it's it's now approved this particular project. It will go back to um, the intake process and the intake process will um, then kick in another process that sits behind it, which means the project's now uh, submitted and was approved and has been created. 
So the project is now physically created in, in the space. But what it then does is it, after that, it will then send that through to Project Online. Now, Project Online, I'm not sure if any of you have ever worked on Project Online before, but um, Project Online is, is um, this is what it, what it ultimately looks like. Um, it's also part of the Office 365 um, stack that you have. So again, there's no additional um, software required to, to actually have this to run. It's just part of the tenant. You just create the sites and um, it's part of the SharePoint space. So um, your landing page could be also highly configurable. You can configure the space to, to how you would want it to see. And again, also configure it in a way that you have a space that belongs to portfolio managers. You have a space that belongs to project managers. You have a space that you can create that belongs to team members. So it is, it is highly configurable as to how you want people to see and actually interact with, with Project Online itself. If we then go to the projects, um, that project that we have now approved, which is um, this webinar 5.1 that we've just approved, we will go into that particular project. We will now, I'll just give a little bit of a talk about um, the, the schedule and, and, and sort of the governance around that. Um, if if you are all familiar with running projects in um, the Microsoft desktop application, um, this is pretty much what this does provide as well for you. Um, if you look at the project online space itself, the, the actual tree on the left hand side is your navigation tree. We can have, it's called a PDP, which is a you know project detail page. You can have all sorts of different types of pages in there, depending on the information that you require. So if you look at, at the information that's come through, some of the information that's come through from the business case or the, um, sorry, the, the idea request that we've submitted, um, it will populate that automatically for you in into this this space. This business case tab is exactly what we have just created in the project request. A lot of the detail is already in there, so you don't have to retype the detail in. It pre-populates all of this, and then um, if this detail is missing, then of course again this is all configurable. Every single bit of these web pages, you can configure to what information you want on those. And again, it's it's input data, so um, it's just pure metadata that you can capture, um, and all of that data will relate to the particular project that you actually work on. If you look at the schedule, um, the schedule is is a familiar look if you've worked on um, the Microsoft desktop application. Um, the this environment gives you about eighty percent of the functionality that um, the Microsoft desktop application gives you. It obviously doesn't have all of that. Desktop application is a really good, good application to work um, with your projects in. Um, and this particular template, if you guys can recall, I spoke about the request type and I've selected um, IT projects. And what it did was when the flows kicked off, it created this project schedule that sits um, within that project that's being generated. So which, which means that the project manager um, doesn't have to go into the project schedule and have a blank one and then actually have to go and recreate it. And like I said, this is just a Microsoft project um, project schedule. There's, there are hundreds and hundreds of different variants of templates that can be used. So if you do an agile one, if you do a software development, if you do a house move, if you do building infrastructure, doesn't matter what it is, um, that particular template can actually be based in this process. So when a project is created, it's all done automatically for you the project can literally start and, and being managed straight away. It doesn't need to actually then start building all the artifacts in order to get the project in a position to actually commence. So um, in, in looking at, at, at the sort of the details that you can that you've got available in this, if you look at the navigation on the left hand side, again, also very highly configurable, depending on what it is you want to see and needing need to see, um, all of the detail can actually be present and we can actually configure um, it in a way that you need to. Just want to go back to um, the, the, the the physical projects to give you the view. If you look at the actual view um, of your portfolio dashboard, if you want to call it that, this is a, a view that is also again you can create views that you want and anything that you would like to see um, that is that is available within the, the whole of the, the project online space. Um, if you look at the indicators, for an example, um, the budget, quality and resources and schedules, these, these are manual um, selectors, but you can also have um, scripts in there that actually will work out calculations that actually runs in the back end. 
um, that creates these these um, sort of indicators um, that it doesn't necessarily have to be dependent on, on a project manager to select whether it's green or red or, or amber. Um, but again, these views are, are highly configurable. You can you can put a, a view together that belongs to for a portfolio manager, for an example, that doesn't have all those necessary details. You can put something together that's that's for project managers with a lot of detail. I can see what what's going on and what phases and stages they are in, and and the same for program management. You can have different views for those. So because every part of the the sort of the digital PMO. Um, requires different methods and different views that they require in order to see the de detail. So, um, from a schedule perspective, when you look at um, in the schedule, when we talk about resourcing, resourcing is 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 of course very very important. Um, we all know that resources deliver projects. On the end of the day, um, the schedule um, that you have, you'll have generic resourcing in there. So, what we what we would generally do is when we create a template for you, we would sort of put a generic resource in to the best fit of what we think that particular task would generally be required for. Um, but again, it's just a, a general, it's a placeholder on the end of the day. So in order to to sort of update this particular um, resource within the schedule, um, you would obviously within in, in the project space, we can do that. We would go to um, build a team and again, whatever you're doing, in, in Project Center or Project Online, with the schedule we're doing right now, you can also do um, add the resourcing via the desktop application. And that's also very possible to put the desktop application, um, what you're doing right now. So remember the generic resourcing that we've got in this particular schedule. If I say that I want to replace the NAN analyst, um, I can go and say, right, match for me. Who do I actually have in my resource pool that I have as analysts? And in this case, um, it will then filter out. Uh, like I've said, it's linked to your Active Directory, and um, that's obviously where a lot of the detail will be pulled from. So it's very easy to actually set um, all of those up. If um, you do have a scenario, um, and we do know that we wanted Topeka to um, actually work on this particular project for us, we can go in um, and, and have a look at Topeka from, from a resource um, capacity planning perspective. And Project Online gives you the capabilities in order to do that. Um, you can set um, how you would want to see um, a lot of the detail being transposed and come through. Um, you can you can filter on just wanting to see a particular um, particular project or how you want to see that. So um, it is it is really up to you how you want to um, view this data because it gives you the capabilities and it gives you date ranges that you can go through. Um, and if you look at the way I've set this one up is I currently look in days and months, and this capacity line, which is the yellow line or the orange line on the bottom, tells you that um, Topeka has got so many days in the month in order to do the work. Um, Topeka has obviously been very busy, uh, a lot of demos that's taking place, so she's got a lot of work ahead of her. But this is a very good indication of, of what it can, can actually provide um, for you to make a very quick decision as to um, what you where you're actually going to place that resource. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So in this case, what we'll do is um, I'll replace some of these um, resources. And I'll put some of the resources into the project schedule. Sorry about that. And it's, it's a matter of just clicking on replace and it will replace that particular resource for you. Uh, same with any of your generic resources that you have. So I'm just going to select a few. Sorry about that, it's just running a little slow at the moment. OK, um, that's enough for now. You'll, I'll save and close. What you will, what you will notice now is, is that um, within um, the resource cap, uh, capacity planning that I've just shown you, we also have 
similar types of reports in Power BI, um, which pulls exactly the same data from Project Online as well. Um, and I will, as I go through the demonstration, um, I will show you um, a few more of those those actual reports, um, what they look like. Um, but for, for now, we'll just go through the process of the, the online stage. Wow, system has slowed down terribly. Come on. OK, so what you'll notice is that um, the, the fact that I have not checked this particular project out, it hasn't updated um, the resources in the generic resources. So what I will, will do is, is that in order to, to understand and see what we have done and to edit this particular project, there's diff two different ways you can edit the schedule. You can edit the schedule in, in the browser, which is in the space that we are appearing right now, or you can edit this in the Microsoft desktop application. So in this case, we'll edit it in um, the browser. So the moment it's going to open it up, you'll see that it will update the resources that and the team that we have built. Um, and it will bring in the resource names that we have, have created in there. There you can see the resources have been replaced, which means we have now got um, the resources in place. So you can also add, um, add tasks in. Um, to the resource. Um, we can add who will be the resources for this particular task. Now, what you'll see on the right hand side um, is what Aaron has made reference to with um, the suite of applications that we have, which is the Teams, the Planner um, that we've got available. Now, this solution does, does a full integration with Teams. Um, and in order for us to to actually pull the data through from the project schedule. And again, whatever you do in the project schedule in the browser space, you can do exactly the same thing in the Microsoft desktop application. Um, exactly the same um, columns will appear on your desktop application as well when you open up the project in there um, to allow you to do that. Now, the planner sync means um, that we want to sync this task back to the planner board. Now, I will go back and show you how that all works, but. Um, I'm now going to um, set the, the flags for us to actually sync all these tasks that I've now allocated resources to. Um, and, and by virtue of doing that, it's literally to drop down. And again, it's pretty much like an Excel spreadsheet. You can do the same thing with um, just dragging um, the lines down. The bucket, now the bucket is, um, if you are familiar with Planner and if you've ever worked in Planner before, um, then you'll know what the buckets are. And it's the same principle with a Kanban board and the same principle with a Jira, that you'll have your user stories, for an example, will sit in a certain bucket and the same principle applies with Kanban. So in this case, um, we, we're following the buckets for, um, for an agile process. Um, and again, highly configurable. You can decide from a business perspective how your delivery framework works. So if you've got a delivery framework that uses uh, Waterfall, then it can be based on exactly that same principle and you can have in your planner board, you have initiation, planning, execute, close as, as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a stage or a phase. And then that's where that particular task will then fall into. And in this case, I just select a couple here. Um, some of these I'll put into sprint two and a few I'll put into backlog. So, um, this is just a, a, a sort of a, a working method, but it's um, training will obviously be given if you haven't worked in it. Um, you have to publish the project back in, and the same applies with your desktop application. Um, you always have to publish whatever changes you make. You've got to publish those changes physically back in, and then um, once you've published it, you check the project back in, and it will then kick off the process in the back end in order to actually send those tasks to to the Teams page. Now. What has happened is that um, during the, the time that we have, we have set up and we have proved um, the project, it's the process flows. If you can remember when I spoke to you at the intake stage, there's a process, there's some flows that's, that kicks off when you select um, the project type. Um, it then creates the Teams page. And if you guys can see that the Teams page is sitting on the left-hand side, 
that then creates the Teams page for you automatically. There's no need to actually create the Teams page separately from by um, creating a project or activating a project in Project Online. Um, and in this case, what you'll have is, is that when the page gets created, the Teams page uh, or the Teams gets created, there's tabs at the top, um, which is tabs that comes from the Project Online environment. So if you look at, at, at the schedule, if you can remember, I worked in the schedule itself. And again, remember, this is also um, configurable to the level of, of the security groups. So if you've got um, portfolio managers that will just want to view, you can actually set their, their statuses and their security to view only, that they don't edit anything in the project. The same with team members um, who work on it. Project managers, of course, will, will be in a position to actually work in the actual project itself. They can go into the schedule. So if you remember, I worked in the schedule itself. Um, they can do exactly the same. Sorry about that. They can do exactly the same work um, in this space in Teams that you actually don't have to go to Project Online. You can work directly in Teams and make the configuration changes that you need for your project. Add tasks, remove tasks, add resources, change the dates, um, do what you need to do in this particular space. And again, this is all automatic. It gets created automatically. The Project documents, as I've said about the different phases. So if you have uh, documents in your different phase, it will create the folder. And we can also make sure that it actually populates the templates associated to each one of those folders, for an example. So you can have in each one of the folders that you do create, the template will be there. So if you onboard a project manager, um, there's no need for them to create any of this, this artifact stuff. It's all done for you automatically in the back end. Um, and they can walk in, they can literally start the project immediately and actually get the ball rolling. And again, this is all in a collaboration space as far as teams are concerned. You run everything out of teams. You don't ever have to actually leave teams to do that. Um, the fact that you have documentation sitting in the space, which is the project documentation, there's no need to save documents to a local machine in order to actually do updates. Um, this is version controlled. It is uh, controlling as to what has been changed. So you'll get notifications stating what's changed within that particular documents, for an example. Um, so it is it is a really good governance um, process that we have found in our organization that really works very, very well. The issues and the risks is exactly the same issues and risks that you will have in Project Online. Um, it's just a easier process and method to actually work in them again. Like I said, you can set securities on, on these things in order to actually run them. The same with risks. Um, you can actually have your risks in there. Keeping in mind that anything that you do in Project Online is always going to be available in, in the team space. And whatever you do on Project Online will always be available in your reporting endpoint, which is going to be the Power, uh, Power BI side. So if we now go to the planner board. Um, remember I spoke about the planner right in the beginning um, about the, the very light um, format of, of sort of the Kanban board and the Jira board process. If you can recall, I have um, selected in Project Online the Planner Sync and the different buckets that I needed those tasks to go into. So what it does is if you add a task and you add a resource name to it and you select Planner Sync and put it into the bucket, what it will do is it will automatically add the resources to the team. So you don't even have to go and actually add the resources in. It will do that automatically for you in the back end. But what it will also do is it will also, you can set this, and this is something that is, is, is a place where you can actually set um, notifications. There's a lot of out of the box notifications that can be turned on and turned off. Um, you can do it in such a way that if a task is added to a resource, that resource will be notified um, very, very quickly via email and via the approvals um, stage within teams that he's been allocated a task and um, also that he's been allocated to a team that belongs to this particular project. So um, within Planner, there's there's some views that you that you can actually go into. Um, what I what I really like with with using this in our organization um, and specifically when it comes to project team meetings and status meetings and things like that, this works really, really well to have a very quick look at what the status is of work in progress and completed. Now, what happens is that if you, um, as a resource, um, and these tasks, by the way, can be split as well, 
that um, interview resources as two different tasks. You can have um, Mahesh as one task separately box, and then um, the people will have a separate box. And that's also in the um, project online space where you select the task. You can select that to split the tasks. So if you pull the tasks into in progress, you'll notice that there's a little round circle that I just call a, a, a glass half full. What this does is it actually notifies um, with the flow that sits in the back end back into your project schedule that this task is now commenced and um, this task is now at 50% complete. Now, um, we all know that if a task is a 10 hour task and, and an individual works one hour on a task, it's not 50% complete, it's a 10% complete of, of the task. So this is where um, you have the the sort of the time management and uh, resource management and time tracking process that kicks in because Project Online offers um, two places where it can be captured. One is um, the time sheeting. So if you go into time sheeting um, as a user of the system um, and we can set it up that every member of the project team can have access to time sheeting. So it will be if a resource thing goes in and he works on a particular task, you can go into the task and say, right, I've just done one hour for it. And when they then submit the, the, um, the tasks for um, approval, they, um, that task one hour will then be pulled through to the project schedule and update the task, which was 50% to a 10%, which is a true reflection of the work that's being done. Um, what it does do is it puts it into um, approval. Um, you as the project manager or alternatively the timesheet manager will then go into the approval process and they will approve that task um, that has been, been done with a timesheeting. And you can also do it in the task space. So the task space is, is exactly the same thing. You can go in there and see if your, your tasks. Um, and it can be, again, these views can be configurable. Um, and then also you can do it by department, you can do it by resource, you can do it by um, various methods of your views. And again, the same principle applies, update the task and the task details then goes through to the project schedule. What happens in the in the project schedule space is that if, you, if you're in um, your project, um, there is an opportunity to, to actually, because how it works is with um, the SharePoint space um, or the cloud, if you want to call it that, they've got their own timings and they, you know, a job can be in the queue and it will run in the next half an hour or it will run in the next hour. It's just the way it's been set up. But if you want to have um, a very clear update and a very quick view of what's happened, there's an icon which is get planner updates. What it will do is it will go to the planner board, which is the one that you have in Teams, and it will actually go and pull the data from the planner board into the project schedule and it will update the project schedule with um, the relevant data that you have um, moved into from the banner board. Um, it will go through its process. We'll come back a little bit later and I'll show you that there's a task that's obviously now been updated. Um, I'll just move a few more in there. So it will go through its process and do its own thing. So just to go back to um, the team space, what also happens is, which is a really nice, a nice to have, um, which which we have found um, is really a, a a very quick snap of of what the current status of the project is. And again, configurable, you can can change what you want to see in this and how you want to see this. Um, it gives you a very quick overview of what the current status of the project is and where you act with it. Every time that you that you publish a project schedule back in, it will generate a report. Or alternatively, there's a job that will generally run once um, a day. You can have it run twice a day. You can set it. You can actually discontinue it. You don't actually have to run it every time. But every every refresh ultimately um, in the back end, it will generate a little little dashboard. Um, there's a tab that will take you through to the reporting. Um, you can actually view the status report of this project. But I, I'm not going to go into that link just yet because I want to show you when we get to the reporting side of things. So when it comes to um, Microsoft Teams, you, you could see that to collaborate and to actually deliver the projects within this environment, it's all running out of one, one place. You, you don't have to go and jump through different applications 
to to different um, folders, to, um, you know, to different network drives, for an example, to capture data or to get data or to see data or to see documentation. Your whole opportunity here is to actually run everything from the teams. And for our organization, it really worked um, really well. It was extremely well received. And also remember that if you if a team has been created, you can also add um, members to this team. You don't have to go through the project schedule and add a task to somebody to actually be part of this team. You can have an individual uh, join the team by virtue of a manager team and you invite and add members to to the actual team itself. So it's so it's very um, resourceful. It's, it's really a, a, a great tool to actually use. So um, it is it is really good to 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 utilize this. So I'm just going to make sure that it's all checked back in. All right, if you can recall, um, I've had that task that I um, updated. And there you can see that it's updated the to the 50%. Now the time sheeting is, is not been approved, so it's not going to update that 50% to 10% yet um, because I, I I don't think we've activated the, the, the time, the new time sheet dates for it yet. But um, ultimately what will happen is it will just overwrite the 50% and put the actual time sheet submission that you've had equivalent to the percentage and it will update that for that task completion. So <clears throat> with all of this said, um, it's it's great to have all of this. And, and I found was this in delivering projects, we all know that visibility is is, is key and, and we know reporting is, is also extremely important for this. Now, the solution also provides where project managers will generally, and we all know it's, it's either every Friday or every second Friday, depending on when reporting is going to be done. These um, status reports, which is actually built into this the solution as well. So instead of completing status reports, um, which sits on either Excel or Word, and then you create PDFs or create PowerPoint presentations of reports, all of this um, is data that's been captured within Project Online and also pulls data into your status report and I'll show what the status report um, template looks like, like now to create it. And again, it's configurable. If you feel that you need to have different fields in there and different methods of what it looks like, absolutely. Um, that will also come out obviously in your in your requirements if you if you need to. So how this works is that um, it will take you to the status report tab and you can then go and actually select the um, project that, that you need to update. And in this case, it will be the one that we have just now created. And what it will do is it will give you a, a form that you can actually complete and you can fill the details into this. You can edit it there. This is the toggles that you can change, um, which is the red, amber, green that you have. So what it will do is it will then update the project schedule as well the the, the project status report. And this report and whatever you've got in this report is all actually presented back into Power BI, which is your um, analytics and your reporting side of it. This report can also be exported if you want to. Um, you can also pull this report off from, from the service, so you don't necessarily just have to leave that there. Um, it is very, very, very useful. So um, I don't think there's anything more that I you know, can say about the Project Online just yet right now because there's a lot more from a, from a detail point of view if you really go into it. But are there any questions um, before I go into the reporting stack and how that, that how it looks? Cool. So for a reporting point of view, this is also um, can be pre-configured. So if you want to have your Power BI report pack, which is a standard pack that we provide, um, included in the configuration and delivery of this, um, and it's all part of the, 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 the setup. So there's no problem for us to actually to include this. So um, I'll open a new tab, even though I do have one open, but I'll give you guys a fresh one. So this is the, the standard report pack that we will provide with the solution. So if we deploy a solution for you, this is the standard pack that you will get. Um, and please always remember that if you've got um, Power BI in your organization, you've got developers in there, for an example, um, once the solution has been put down, none of this is custom built. So you guys can obviously pick it up and you want to make changes, you can. Alternatively, you can always come back to us as well and to ask us to, to do additional reporting if you want. 
um, but be more than happy to, to of course, accommodate. Um, I don't know if, if any of you have worked with Power BI before, but if you have, um, you'll know that Power BI is extremely interactive. Um, in, in the portfolio dashboard, for an example, you can go and have a look at projects as by phase. So if you want to see what projects I actually have in execution at the moment, you can literally click on that and it will filter all the projects that you have in that particular um, phase that it sits in. You can also um, look at projects by, by department. Um, again, highly configurable, depending on how you want to see the data being presented. And what it will do is you'll see that you have different sort of indicators at the top. Um, you know, and if you look at the execution one, it will tell you how many projects I have in execution currently, what are the total budgets for them, um, what are the risk counts, um, are there any issue counts, et cetera. So it's very, very interactive. You can, there's filters in here that you can select that you want to, if you want to see only specific projects, for an example, you can do that. Um, the next next uh, tab that you have or the next visual is milestones. Um, I mean, this, this goes without saying, very, very interactive. So you, you can see uh, milestones. You can also change the dates. If you want to see milestones coming up in the next 60 days, you can do that. You want to see in the next 90 days, you can see that. So it gives you a really good forward looking view you know, maybe an eight week look ahead for an example, and you can you can set that um, as well with within the back end of this. Uh, there's the portfolio risks. Um, again, highly, highly configurable uh, risks by category. Do we actually have vendor risks? Uh, do we have, um, you know, software risks? What, what are they? Um, these are risks again, as you can recall, um, when I say to you in, in Teams, um, the risk data is, is coming from here. And that's where the risk data comes from, from each one of the projects, and it pulls it all from, from this from this particular um, environment. Same with issues. Uh, again, by category, uh, you can do it by status. Um, it's very interactive. The the following sort of three or four slide uh, um, visuals that I want to show you is is really really helpful. Um, also, if you can recall the. Um, Capacity planning that I showed you when we changed the, um, the generic resources for name resources. So this is just a, a, a better visual um, in more detail that you can actually have a look at. So for an example, if you if you look at Topeka, um, what it will also do is it will give you a demanding capacity over time. Remember that uh, 21 days that we initially saw there. This is a representation of that, but it just gives you a little bit more detail about that. It gives you availability over time for the resource. And it will also tell you what are the assignments that the resources assigned to. So um, you can you can select any one of the resources. You can go into any one of these as, as an interactive and it will give you the necessary details that you want. So again, highly configurable. Um, it's not just a standard custom bowl that you see in this space. Resource overview gives you a view of the resource pool that you have. You can go and filter on IT and it will tell you who are the IT resources. And then you can go and by role. What are they by role? Um, it gives you a really good view of, of what the, the usage of those, those resources are. Resource details, um, also a really good visual. Um, if you look at these indicators at the top, um, you know, in this case, we have got Topeka um, selected as a, as a resource, um, but you can also have, you know, to clear the filter of that, you can have a, a visual of all your resources as to what the demand over time is and what are the amount of assignments that the resources are there, what is the work remaining. So it's again, um, very, very, very configurable um, and also very interactive. You can really be very selective as to what you want to see on the end of the day. So um, the next one is the demand forecast. This detail is, is sort of a historical detail. Um, Power BI pulls the detail from Project Online and it will, it will sort of do an analysis in the back end and it'll give you a view of, of what the resource over time was. And then it will tell you forecast what are your resource um, forecast demands going to look like. Um, so it, it, it's a really helpful, helpful tool. This is the project status report. If you can recall in Project Online, I went into the project status bar where I update the project status reporting. And the detail that's been captured over here, plus other details are being pulled through. This is what the status report then looks like, um, which is again. Um, you know, you can you can be very selective as to how you want to want to see the reporting. Um, it's it's really very very easy to navigate. Um, and again, uh, there, there was a question earlier on about this. Um, for an example, you can also export this into Power, uh, PowerPoint. So this particular um, report, or any of the reports, or even the whole of the deck, 
can be exported into PowerPoint if you wish. Um, so it's it's really, you know, there's a lot that you can do with, with some of these reportings. Um, project risk and issues just gives you an overview of the risks and the issues and where you stake with it. Budget versus actuals. Um, again, we can we can do some of the the, the data that gets pulled through. Remembering um, it's where the data has been captured. We can also um, have you know integrations as we've earlier on said, but there's integrations that's capable of putting stuff from ServiceNow or SAP or, or ECM or, or some of those systems as well. Um, but it's obviously just a little bit more work, but no problem at all. It can all be pulled through to to the same solution that we have. Um, the nice thing about this with the um, sort of portfolio map, um, I think there was, I think Abby was you that um, that said that initially about where all the work is. Um, or oh, sorry, you know, it was Daniel. Sorry about um, where all the different pieces of work um, is being taken place, even if it's out of the country. Um, you can you can have you know sort of your portfolio map as to where it sits, where's all the work coming from. Um, so it's very very easy to to also um, put it in a, in a visual view in the spaces. So when you configure projects, um, you'll do it in exactly the same method. You'll you'll have country numbers for projects and and so on and so forth. So but it's all trans transposed through into the Power VI stack that you can actually have a view of. Um, and and guys, that's that's ultimately um, the solution in a in a, in a 45 minute. Um, sort of presentation for you guys to give you an idea um, and a flavor of, of what it is. But like I said, I think it's um, it's for us as an organization, we have found an, an enormous amount of value. Um, if you guys can remember, I updated the statuses um, and the indicators and it's pulled through the status indicators as well. So it's added an enormous amount of value for us um, right up to board level, where instead of having packs and packs and packs of of reporting being printed on on sort of paper and do PowerPoint presentations, you know, um, all the project work that's being done and being captured in Project Online and the collaboration work for delivering of the projects and teams and the space in there is, is then being um, trans, transposed into um, Power BI, you know, for, for reporting. So for us, it's it's an absolute transformation from your traditional project delivery into digital, because this is exactly what we have done. And um, it's I have to admit that there's been a, an enormous um, uptake from new project managers that come in, and they like the idea that you walk into an, an organization and things are in place for them. If they get allocated a project, then it's done, set up, and it's created for them. I wanted to mention one last thing. On teams, um, if you look at um, this, is also extremely manageable when it comes to this. So you look how I've got um, five projects that I've created, but let's say we have a program and, and it's an IT software program. You have channels in there. We can also do it in such a way that um, all of these projects belong to that program and it can actually sit in the channels below that um, so that it doesn't um, create a team's individual team's page as it stands in this format for every single project and it, and it creates a massive tree on there in the end. So this is um, something else that we can we can do as well. So it's also an option to actually keep it clean and neat um, when it comes to managing um, your your actual teams creation. And again, um, you know, there's, there's a process that, that you can actually have an app available that manages the team creations. So um, we've, we've, we've got all of that covered. Um, in our solution that we can deliver to you.